In this video, I'm going to work through the Casino Lab. Roulette is a casino game where the dealer spins a wheel with 37 slots, numbered 0 through 36, then rolls a ball in the opposite direction. Eventually, the ball loses momentum and falls into one of the slots. Players can place bets on where the ball lands. You can choose a low number, numbers 1 through 18, or a high number, 19 through 36, or you can choose a very specific number. So the payouts are as follows. If the ball lands on a zero, or the player chooses incorrectly, the player loses what they bet. Next, player chooses low or high correctly, player wins two times their bet, or if the player chooses the specific number correctly, they win 35 times their bet. So it is recommended that you complete the object-oriented programming worksheet number one in the folder, just to refresh your memory on the names of parts of the classes. Now we're going to first write a player class. Then next we're going to write a roulette class and then we'll write a casino class. And before we get going on that, I wanted to switch over to the whiteboard so that you could see uh, what a roulette board looks like and also how the classes fit together. So the roulette wheel looks something like this. You can see that there's various numbers on the wheel, and we have a spot for zero. I guess there's two spots for zero right there. And um, this is this would be on a like a felt table, and players could place their chips uh, in this area for a low number, this area for a high number, and that pays out uh, one to two. So if you bet a dollar, you get two dollars back. Uh, or you could choose a very specific number. Let's say it, I would choose the 18. It, it would, if it landed on the 18, I would get 35 times my bet. So if I bet a dollar, I would get $35 back. Of course, if you bid on any of the other numbers, um, you would get a zero if it if it landed on, you would get zero back if it landed on an 18. Okay, uh, these other options would be possible if we were setting up a rule game of roulette, but we're not going to consider those options. All right, let's look at our classes. So what I have here is what's known as a UML class diagram. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. That's a graphical language to represent different concepts when you're planning out writing a program. Um, and you commonly will see in our classes in high school UML class diagrams. So each box has a class name in it. And then we will have arrows that show what type of relationship that the classes have with one another. So we're going to write these three classes, a casino class, a player class, and a roulette class. Well, the casino will actually have a player object and a roulette object. And then the casino will interact with the player and the roulette so that the player has to put money on the line for their bet and the roulette table will determine uh, how the play uh, occurs. Basically asking the player how much they would like to bet, and then generating a random number to determine the outcome of the spin. This is what's known as a composition relationship because the casino is composed of a player and a roulette. And that's designated in these diagrams with a dashed arrow line. All right, let's get back to the uh, definition of the classes and we will write them up. All right, so first we're gonna write a class called player. And this will model a player at the roulette wheel in the casino. And the player has two fields. We also call these instance variables. So a string for name and a double for a wallet. I'm gonna come over to my IDE and I'm using this folder right here for my this particular project. So I'm going to write the player class. And let me switch this to easier viewing. Okay, so here's my player class and the class has a string for the name and double for the amount of money they have in their wallet. Next, we have a constructor, a player constructor that takes a string n and a w, uh, sorry, a double w, which will be the name and the starting wallet amount. So public player takes in a string n for the name and a double W for the wallet. We're going to initialize the instance variables. So it's important that you initialize them correctly. Um, if you 
swap uh, and write n equals name. That would be bad, so don't do that. You need to, to put the instance variable on the left and the parameter on the right. So call it equals w. That is our constructor. The next method is broke. <clears throat> this is a public method, it returns a boolean, and it returns true if the player has no money in his or her wallet. So I'm going to skip over here. Public boolean broke takes no parameters. And then we just need to return true if it's broke. So if the wallet is equal to zero, then we know that's that he's broke. And I'm, you might even say less than or equal to zero. I don't know if it's possible for him to have negative money, but if he has zero or less, he is definitely broke. That finishes our player class. Next, write the, the roulette class. This class models the spinning wheel in the game of roulette. Our methods are a constructor, which is roulette. This is a default constructor, and since we have no instance variables, uh, there really is nothing to do, but we will add it. And next, we'll write place bet. So I'm going to write the constructor and then come back for the other part. So to my game, I'm adding a method called roulette. And in the class, we'll write constructor. This constructor doesn't need to do anything because there are no instance variables to initialize. But it is nice to have a default constructor nonetheless. Next, we will write the public double place bet method. And this parameter double bet is used to represent the amount of the bet. This method should spin the wheel and return the amount the player has won. Um, in order to play, the player will have to give up their bet so really, we only have to return how much they've won, not how much they've lost. First, we want to declare and initialize a scanner object to get keyboard input and a random object for generating random numbers. And then we're going to want to make an integer variable called spin and then generate a random number. So let's do those things. Click double a set, and this will take a double for the amount of the bet. And we're going to create a scanner. And we take care of the import. We're going to be reading from keyboard, so system.in for that scanner. We also want to generate a random number generator. Like so, and I'm going to let my IDE import for us. And then I'm going to generate a random number, which is the spin. So what I have to put in here is the bound. And remember, I want a number between 0 and 36. Oops, let me write that again. We want a number between 0 and 30, 36 inclusive. So I have to put a 37 in here, and that will give me a number in the correct range. All right, that takes care of 1 and 2. Number 3, prompt the user telling them to choose, uh, choose a 1 to bet on low choose a two to bet on high and choose a three to bet on a specific number. And if they do choose three, I need to ask them which number they'd like to bet. So first I'm gonna start by printing out the menu. And this is really uh, kind of up to you how you want to display this. I'll probably just say um, betting options. So one if they want to bet low, and we'll just remind them what they're betting on. Or two to bet high, 
which would be from 19 to 36. Or they could bet three to choose a specific number. Then I'll ask them what their choice is. I like to use print for this. It depend, depends on how your console works. How, oops, how would you like to bet? And then I'll collect their choice. Let me scroll up here so you can see this. And there we go. So that gives us their choice. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we do need to get uh, a number choice if they chose three. But we also have to print the result of the spin to the console as well as determine the amount of the user's winnings. So I think I'm going to do that in a series of if statements. I'm going to handle what, what the outcome is if they choose one, then if they choose two, and then if they choose three. So I'm coming back over here to the code. Let me add some more spaces so I can scroll up a little bit. So if they chose and the spin is within range. So the spin is greater than or equal to, to one. And the spin is less than or equal to 18. Space there. Oh, forgot to put in the equals. So if their choice is one and the spin is within range, meaning it's greater than or equal to one or less and less than or equal to 18, then that means that they won. So um, I, th I think I would like to create the award. This is how much their win their winnings are. Maybe we'll call it winnings. And I'll initialize that to zero because that's the default amount of winnings. And in this case, if they chose one and it falls within this, the spin falls within that range, then the winnings are equal to two times the oops, two times the bet. And I'm going to print out what the spin is. And then return the amount of the award or the winnings. So this is going to be very similar to this one um, for taking care of if they chose the high number. So I'm just going to copy paste this and adjust. So if they chose two, but now their spin has to be within the upper range. So it has to be greater than or equal to 19 and less than or equal to 36. That would put it in the high range, in which case their winnings have also doubled their bet and we will print out the spin and we will return their winnings. Next, we'll handle what happens if their choice is equal to three. Well, if their choice is equal to three, we need to ask them what, what number they would like to pick. I'll capture their number from the scanner and then we'll determine the outcome. So if the number equals the spin, then we'll do what we did up here. We will calculate their winnings, but instead of two times the bet, it's 35 times the bet. We still want to print out the spin and then we want to return the award. Now, if we get through all of these choices, I still have to return something. So the amount of, I can return zero or I can return the amount of the winnings, which is also zero. But we've, we've 
really hit these all along the way. So if we wanted to, we could just put the winnings at the very end and then get rid of all of these returns in the middle here. And I think that that would be a little bit cleaner. And we can also move the spin outside as well. I think that will be cleaner. Auto format this and let's double check our logic. So in the place bet method, we create a scanner to collect keyboard input, a random number generator, and we generate a random number between 0 and 36. We give them their betting options and we collect their choice. This next part here is where we determine the outcome. So we set double winnings to a default value of zero, and then we check to see if they chose a low as their bet, and if the spin is within the low range, then, we, then their winnings are twice their bet. Um, else if they chose two, and that would be the high range, and the spin fell within the high range, their winnings would also be two times their bet. Or they could have chosen three, which means we needed to know what number that they chose. And we would calculate their winnings if their number equaled the bet. And then we would print out the spin and return the winnings. So I believe that is correct. Okay, now we get to move on to our next class, the casino class. The casino class models the casino floor so it has two fields. It has a player and a roulette. That's where the composition relationship comes in. It's composed of a player and a roulette game. So let's create the class. Here's my folder with my classes in it. And this is casino. And in the casino class, we have a player and we define this class. So we get to use a user defined class. And we'll make a roulette object and we'll call it game. That's our game. Next, we're going to write a constructor. The constructor is used to initialize the instance variables. So because I'm not collecting them using parameters, then I'm just going to create a new player and a new game. So public casino takes in no parameters for this constructor. Player is set equal to a new player. And we're just going to hard code these. Now a player takes a name. So we'll use Alice. And Alice has $100 in her wallet. Next, we need to instantiate a roulette. So we'll say game equals new roulette. And this is a default constructor. That means that there's no parameters in the parameter list. So the constructor is finished. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of space just so that So the next method, public void play, the method called to play a game of roulette, which involves placing bets and spinning the wheel. This method has been written for you. Hooray, I'm going to copy and paste it for you. But if you're working by yourself, you can get it from the playmethod.txt file in the lab folder in your project. And as long as you've written everything according to the directions, it should compile. Okay. Mine compiles because I have written the classes correctly. So it starts by um, creating some variables for the bet, the result, and the input. It, and then it steps through playing the game. So you can read that for yourselves. Last, we want to make a class called Runner. And this is going to have a main which creates a casino object and then calls its play, play, uh, play method. So we will step through that. 
So I'll create a new class called Runner. And this class will have a main method. And I will create a casino object. I will call it casino. And we'll call it constructor to create one. And then we'll say casino.play. And let's play the game. Alice, you have $100. How would you like to bet? Or how much would you like to bet? I would like to bet $10. So my betting options are low, high, or choose a number. I'm going to choose low. The spin was one. So I won $20. That's terrific. So my amount is $110. Now you might say, why is my amount not $120? Well, that's because I had to forfeit the $10 just to play the game. And so that would have brought my amount down to $90. And then winning the $20 on top of that would be a net difference of 110. I'll play again. I'm going to bet $25 and I want to bet high and I won. So this wraps up our casino lab.